everyone, welcome to Watch It, Paint It. This week we're painting a model from Fireteam Zero and it's Commander Geitz, Commander Geitz, not quite sure how you say that. Just showing you the model, this is a massive, massive model. Just showing it you before we start painting it. Uh, this, this is a really cool model to me, wanted to paint it for some time. We're starting off with Tinny Tin. So speaking of wanting to paint it for some time, this is a model that Stephen from Patreon's choose, chosen. And I say chosen and I think that's quite a loose term. I think I sort of maybe twisted his arm into it because I wanted to paint it so much because it looks badass. So apologies to Stephen, apologies to you. You're uh, having to watch a model that I basically wanted to paint it and twisted Stephen's arm. So thanks for that, Stephen. It's nice to paint something I'm really, really excited about painting. So Tinny Tin, as I mentioned, this is one by Vallejo. It's a dark irony tin color really and this is to do all of the metallics now i think you could do depending what look you're going for if you're not happy with this look at the end you could easily be doing this in in a silver i think as a mech it would look pretty cool in a big silver silvery form i'm going to be looking at making it look quite weathered quite tarnished over the years and the fact it's like this alien creature as well i wanted it to look a bit run down so that's where i'm going with this Dark flesh tone is the base colour for all of these alien disgusting parts bursting out of the mech. So his arm, a couple of tentacles sticking out. And that big blob on his back as well. So, so far I've just been using my monster brush. That's by the army painter. This one It's the biggest one I have. And I'm not being particularly accurate where it's meeting each bit. I'm going to be covering this in a lot of weathering afterwards. So I'm not too worried about that. Yellow Olive by Vallejo, that's the army green I'm wanting to use for this soldier that the mechs grabbed hold of. So it was at this point I really noticed this is taking quite a long time, and by the end it's taken a very long time. I mean, really, you're painting... That that soldier there is the same size as normal models that I paint, so it's no it's no wonder why it took so long. And then it's got a nice 3D base that I'm doing now, and charred brown is the base colour. Uh, that's the darkest brown I have by Vallejo. And again, this is a 3D base. This is like painting a model in itself. It's quite, well, it's very detailed and it's massive. So on top of the big mech that you're painting, which is already big, you've got a huge 3D base, which is big, and you've got another soldier, which is the same size that I normally paint. So this is a big, ambitious model for us. For the skin, I'm going to be using Vallejo's Pale Flesh. Now I'm using Vallejo's, all of Vallejo's colors so far because I haven't primed this model. And with all of the game colors by Vallejo, you can also use them as a primer. So Although this isn't the skin colour I prefer, I do prefer Army Painter's Survivor skin. It's a little bit darker. I can work better with it and highlight it up to this colour. Because this can be used as a primer, it's just getting used here. I'm also going to use Bone White by Vallejo. Until the model's completely based, i.e. primed, I'm going to use all of Vallejo's colours. So it's Bone White, and that's to do those leggings that the soldier wears. I'd ask Stephen what that might be. As it turns out, it could be any different colours, depending which soldier, which era what regiment, lots and lots of things. I know very, very little about soldiers, so just chose to do it a lighter colour so he's got a little bit of detail in, on him. I'm going to use Machine Gun Metal. Now, this is by the Army Painter. I do prefer their silvers, and because it's now primed, I can switch to Army Painters. And I'm going to paint those two girders that have fallen on the floor beneath him. Although they've been on the ground, they might have been there for longer. They, there's a good chance they should be weathered more, but I like to have the contrast Knowing that I'm weathering the mech, I'm going to paint the girders just normal underneath. So there's different colours and textures. It gives the model a really different feel, having lots and lots of different metals. I'm going to use Filthy Suit again. Because it's now primed, I can switch to Army Painters, and I like this light grey by the Army Painter. So I'm going to use Filthy Suit to paint on that wall that's on the base. As I, as I mentioned, it's like painting a model entirely by itself. It's going to take a little bit of time, but you get what you put into these models, especially... Especially what I found with the Fireteam Zero ones, they're very, very detailed. The base is as detailed as some of the models I paint are. I'm going to also whip out that bone white again. Painting the commander's hair in this colour and his eyebrows in there as well. Uh, it's very close to the pale flesh, but it looks like it was that colour in the artwork. Dead black by the army painter. This is my black. And I'm going to be painting in the soldier's belt and braces in this black, as well as his soldier boots. I do need to get hold of Vallejo Black as well. I keep mentioning it nearly every video now. I need the game colour one so I can base using their black. It uh, just makes it, means I can do consistent videos. I can use all of Army Painters for some, all of Vallejo's for others, that sort of thing. I'm on to uh, washing now. So that's all the basing done. That's how the model looked completely based. And we're going to use light tone for all the light areas. That's the skins. So his face, Commander Geitz's face and the soldier's skin. 
and then we're gonna use Plague Shader, that's the green shader by Army Painter, and that's to do all the greens. So the Army Painter's clothes. I'm also gonna catch those, those I don't know what they're called, the boot legging part as well, just to try and make that a little bit greeny now. Jumpsuit Shader, that's the Army Painter's red shader, and that's to do all of the alien parts, so that massive yucky arm, all those tentacles popping through the metal, and that big lump, the mass on the back of, back of the, the mech as well. Now, I've probably mentioned a few times, but using all of these different shaders does add time and effort to painting your models. It's a lot quicker just to go over it, anything you want in the same shader. But using the colours that match the, the base colour more accurately, I have a feeling it's given a much more realistic shadow to them and meaning highlighting is just that much easier and it's less like harsh, the transition between the, the contrast between the shade and the, the highlight. Here we're just using Deep Shader, the last of the shading, and that's just to do the whole of the base that the mech stood on. Next, I'm going to switch to a cheap brush that I've got, supplied by Quick Draw Supplies. Thank you very much for this brush. Uh, and this is just because I don't want to wreck my Army Painter brushes. I'm going to be doing something new on the channel. I'm going to use Typhus Corrosion. That's a technical paint by Citadel. I bought it especially for this video. thought I'd give it a try. And I'm just applying this, much like a wash, but I'm doing it in sort of the deepest recesses and spreading it up onto the top. So anywhere that water might collect to all, all of the like nooks and crannies and then anywhere that the corrosion might rise up from that. So I'm sort of pooling it in all of the nooks and crannies where I want to add corrosion and then dragging it up a little tiny bit. I'm going to switch to my dry brush and use another technical paint by Citadel and this is Riser Rust and I'm going to be dry brushing this very lightly on all of those areas I've just added the corrosion to and that corrosion ha it's like a bitty gritty paint so some of the bits like grit settles in it and you can dry brush this rust not only across the edges of your model but on those gritty lumps that the typhus corrosion has left behind and I'm just dry brushing this several times over and over and over all over the model and this is what you're presented with at the end so a very rusty dirty looking mech exactly what I was going for like it's been out in the rain for far too long and far too damaged by by becoming an alien. After that, we're just gonna highlight, again, dry brushing with some Claymore Blade, just to add some silver back to the model, just make it look a little bit more like a mech, not completely rusty. Mainly going this way on all the sort of movable parts or anywhere it might have taken a bit of more recent damage or you know been scuffed against something. So after that's finished, you presented with this, and I think it's looking pretty good. First of all, I'm very, very pleased with that and fairly realistic as well. Possibly a bit too sort of degraded to actually be effective on the battlefield. It looks like it would fall apart at any minute, but it's still interesting. I've never painted anything like this before, so it's going to be awesome to have something completely different on the battlefield. We're going to be dry brushing some more, and this is using Vallejo's Earth. And this is to dry brush on top of that charred brown that we, we did the base on. I'm mainly going around the edge. It's a 3D base, so you can see sort of there's nooks and crannies in all of this, this dirt that's on the ground. So I'm just dragging this dry brush over all the raised parts that I can see. And that's just adding some 3D look to, to the ground that he's walking across. A little, very, very easy piece of work, but it does add the, a load to the base instantly. I'm going to use Claymore Blade just to highlight all the edges of those two girders. So along the two... Uh, don't know what you call them like the, the legs and head of the girder and just along the corners of the sides of them as well just anywhere that, that that's sticking up from the ground below anywhere the light would be reflecting off the most and there's also a girder between his legs that's hard to see i'm going to carry on with the detail brush in this claymore blade and i'm going to be highlighting up the very most shiny parts of the mech that was kind of hard to get with the dry brush so that's like all the metal where it's be the the aliens bursting out of that would have left shards of brand new shiny metal so around the tentacles then i'm also just painting the very edges of sort of all the metal components where the light would be catching along the edge and then anywhere again moving parts or um or war like recently scratched bits so i was painting the pistons on on the back of the leg you could see just there i painted those silvers though they'd, they'd be going in and out uh, I don't know which or what all the parts of the pistons are called, but you know, you know, the smaller ones going inside the larger ones. So I think that would be clean and silver. So that's why I highlight that. I just think it adds a little bit of realism to it. So here we're painting bone white. I'm just painting in the his boot warmers, his leg warmers, in bringing him back to a bit more bone white. Just leaving a hint of green. I just want them to look slightly green. 
and also the commander's hair was bone white there. I'm going to use olive green again just to highlight up the green. So on the base, I've just painted a few plants. Some bits look like plants. Just adding a little, a little detail touch there and making the base look even better. It looked really, really good. One of the best bases I've got. And I didn't have to do anything other than paint it. I'm also using the olive green just to highlight up the soldier's uniform again. So just catching all the raised bits, sort of his pockets, his kneecaps, his buttocks, his fly. That was on show as well. The edges of his shirt, if you can carefully reach behind the mech's hand. And then I'm going to mix that with bone white, 50-50, one-to-one ratio, using my ex uh, insane detail brush. And I'm just going to paint on the very, very edges now in this color. So all of the folds in his uniform, the very edges of his pockets, and any creases down his shirt as well. And the, cuff, the folded up cuffs of his shirt as well, so they're catching a little bit more light. And I'll just catch the very rim of his helmet as well. I'm going to take out Filthy Soup by the Army Painter again. This is to highlight up those bricks that are on the base. So as, I, as I've mentioned, it's like painting three models. Honestly, the base it itself will have taken half an hour of my time at least. The, the soldier that he's just killing will have taken half an hour to an hour of my time. You know, this that's the amount of time I'd spend on a small model anyway. So it's, it's a lot of effort, this. But I think the final result's great, as we'll get to shortly. White primers out, and I'm going to be painting Commander Geitz's eyes. So I'm just using my insane detail brush, just adding a little blob in his eyeball area of white on each side. And then I'm going to use the insane detail brush again with an even smaller amount of dead black just to dot in two pupils. And luckily for me, first time, bang in the center each, another little blob just to make them a little bit darker. I'm going to use pale flesh to highlight up Commander Geitz's uh, face. So that's his forehead, his nose, his cheeks, and his jawline. I'm also just going to catch a little bit on his chest. He's got like two pecs sticking through, so they need a doing. And the soldier he's crushing is also going to get some work done to both of his arms. Uh, all the muscles are going to be highlighted, giving him some tone and definition. Just a little bit on his face, on his jawline and his nose. But there's not a lot of detail to his face, which I'm not happy with. I thought that was a really poor part. Like You can see his whole face, but he's got no detail in it, so it's a bit sad. But I'll deal with that towards the end of the video. We're using terracotta just to highlight up all the alien parts of the model again. So I'm painting each segment of these sort of tentacles, each uh, blob slash muscle on his on his arm. This is going to take some time. I'm going to use the detail brush, just really highlighting, painting back in that base color to all of the raised bits, just leaving the, the recesses all shaded with that uh, army painter shade that I used during the, the shading process. So this bit does take quite a long time. Maybe I should have used a bigger brush, but I think there's enough strands that it does need a detail brush. So it's just take your time painting all the, the segments, painting all the strands of Alien. It's going to look very, very good at the end. So I'll just fill this space with a bit of, as I mentioned in my previous January videos, I'd like to push the Patreon a little bit this, this month, try and get off to a good start of the new year. So if you are enjoying these videos, if you look like the channel, if you want to contribute more, there's a community page and on Patreon, you can support the channel from as little as a dollar. Even if you don't want to support it, you can just follow the channel and you can get updates there, join in the community area, share some of your uh, creations. We'd love to see it. And I'd like, love you guys to help each other. We're all new to painting or experienced. Either way, come and share the fun. Tan's next, and that's the next highlight for the alien bit. So I'm just going to be catching the very most raised areas now, sort of blending this in. So down the tentacles, I'm just catching the sort of raised edge of the tentacle, his claw, just catching the tips of his claws, just highlighting up some of the more raised strands of that disgusting alien part, catching the tip of that tentacle there. The same down all the tentacles, really just catching the very top where it's where the two sides meet into a point. Um, and on the back, I'm just going to catch the most sticking out strands. Uh, I think you can see all that pretty clearly in the video. So next, I'm just taking a second to show you the lack of detail in this soldier's face. Hopefully, you can about make that out in the video. You can sort of see an eye, a bit of a note, like there's no mouth. It's it's pretty difficult to see. So I wasn't happy with it. So I thought, perfect, let's use some blood. Uh, pretty much just use blood to cover up my mistakes or cover up things I don't like in models. So it's Glistening Blood by the Army Painter. It's one of their technical-ish paints. I'm just going to paint in some blood on his face and sort of have that running down his body splat a bit on the mech's arm as well. And get some on his hand as though he's defending himself and I think that looks great. So two hours, 16 minutes, but this is the model completely finished. This is me showing it to you at the end for the last and final time. And I'm super, super happy with this model. It took me longer than most of my models do, but it's huge. Like that's not a long time considering the amount I had to paint. 
I think he looks great. Let me know in the comments below if I went over the top with the weathering. I could see that, but I think it's a good demonstration of how that weathering can look. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed at least seeing it on a big model where you can see what it might look like. Thank you to Stephen for picking this model and thank you all very much for watching it. P.S. Come and check out my Patreon. Thanks guys.